Um, hi. So uh, this is just a brief talk about, uh, well, as it says, parallel testing uh, in Calabash on iOS. Um, just a brief bit about me. Uh, my name is Tim Baverstock. I've done various Unixy, Sysadmin developer stuff um, for those companies. Um, but now I'm here. I've been here for a few months, and I'm an SQAAE, whatever the heck that is. Um, so at Badoo, we have about 450 Calabash tests, um, and they take about eight device hours to run. Um, on Android, this is not so much a problem. We have multiple devices plugged into the test machine, and so eight devices, one hour of test run on the wall clock, that's fine, everybody's happy. We could plug more devices in if we want to, and people are even happier. On iOS, unfortunately, um, there's a restriction that you can't run more than one device, one simulator at the same time, which means that 450 tests means eight wall clock hours. So we start them in the evening, we go home, and they fail, and everybody's unhappy. Most of this time is waiting for the user interface or for the network, so there's an awful lot of wasted time um, that could be being used in, the, you know, in a parallel way, the way that Android uses it. Um, the common internet wisdom is that you can't do it. Um, the simulator is a singleton. You can't run more than one simulator at a time. The instruments command, which is how you talk to it, is also a singleton. You can't talk to more than one of these things at the same time. Cucumber is a singleton, or at least it assumes that it's only, only running one set of tests at a time. And Calabash makes all sorts of assumptions that there is only one simulator running. And this is all because it's not possible to run it in parallel. So that's really not very good. I come from an Android background, and I thought this was bonkers. So I thought I'd give it a go. Um, it was fairly obvious that the worst possible, well, the, the, the sort of the uh, most complicated, but the, one, the, 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 the solution that's most likely to work is simply to spin up a bucket load of VMs and have them all running the stuff in parallel. Um, we decided not to do that immediately because it's a lot of work and we wanted to see whether the multiple user um, scenario would work instead. And actually, um, I tried running a couple of uh, Calabash tests simultaneously in two different users on the same machine. Um, and it worked well enough that it seemed worth pursuing. Um, some, so it's fairly simple to spin up two simulators now. You open them with the minus N option. They come up. That's great. Um, but unfortunately, Calabash uses Apple Script, so it expects there only to be one simulator. So if you have two simulators open on the same desktop, it gets confused. Um, similarly, with um, Xcode 632, the command that I mentioned previously, the uh, instruments command um, can actually run, can actually be used for multiple devices at the same time, but this was an unannounced change that Apple made. So it could break at any time, but it seems to work for the time being, so that's good. Um, with all that in, uh, in mind, I basically took the utility that we use for multiple, multiple cucumber testing on Android, and I adapted it to work with iOS. Lots of logging, lots of messing around and trying to jiggery pokery to try and get things going. Um, Parallel Calabash is a bit of a bodge. It, it works, it's useful, um, but unfortunately there are some shortcomings. It shares the tests numerically so that you have 100 tests. The first 33 are shared to the first device, 33 to the second, 33 to the third, and it doesn't matter how fast or how slowly they run, if the first device finishes within half an hour, the other two devices may be running for how, you know, an extra hour or something. And you've obviously wasted the time that could be spent, uh, sorry, the, 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 the execution time that could be, I'll start again. The tests that the other, the other two devices are still running could be given to the first device and it, it could shorten the overall time. But it's not a bad um, first stab. Um, the reports at the end of the, um, when the tests will finish, are all slotted up into different files, which is, at least you get the results, but it's inconvenient because you have to check three separate files or four or five separate files to see what failed, and that's not so good. Um, so there are shortcomings, but it, at least it works. Um, we tend to use 
uh, at the moment we're testing, usually testing our, our, our iOS stuff on a simulator because it runs faster than testing the device. If you want to reset the, the uh, device, you have to unload and reload the, um, the application from the device, which is slow. On the simulator, you can just delete and wipe the files, which is nice and fast. So initially, I started looking at multiple simulators. Um, they're nicer than devices because they run fast. But unfortunately, you need a separate graphical environment, as I mentioned before, because of Apple Script. And we have some screen scraping tests, the tests that have used screen scraping as, as part of their, um, uh, their running system. So we need to give them a graphical environment. Um, and we're currently doing that by using type VNC, which means that we can have multiple desktops up uh, at the same time. This is kind of OK, and it, it will allow us to do automatic login uh, when, the, when the device starts up. We don't have to sort of sit there typing the password again. Um, but unfortunately, there are some issues with it at the moment where it messes up the authentication for the network. Um, if you do some user switching, it also messes up as well. So there, it's, it's a little bit rickety, but it sort of works. Um, and also, if you're trying to run multiple simulators at the same time, there's a monkey patch that you need to impose on Calabash in order to get it to reset things properly, because it, 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 it makes the assumption that there's only one simulator, which there isn't. OK, so this is just a quick demo uh, of two things running. Um, so this is, this is actually from the previous test run, so this will disappear shortly and be replaced. This is the run starting up now. Um, it's not very easy to see, but the, this is basically, this has discovered the two um, device slots that I've configured. Um, and it's just about to boot up in this one. And so this is, this is, this is a, a VNC window. So this is actually running sort of on a secondary user. And this one here is actually running on the desktop, my user desktop. Um, and it's very exciting. You can see these tests running and typing and stuff. I don't know how long we want to wait to see. I'll just wait so we can see it typing on the screen, and, and you can see that it actually is doing stuff together. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. So they're obviously operating at the same time. Um, so this was the cause of great celebration when it worked. Um, so that I don't really need to look, look at that too much, but that, that's basically the two tests working at the same time. So this is on one host. Um, the setup for this is fairly simple. Um, we have multiple test users. I mean, I've written test user 123 here. We call them QA 123, but it doesn't matter. Um, each test user has, uh, is identified as a test user by having a dot parallel Calabash file, um, which, as I say, identifies the test users. It just scans the, the user's home directories to see, to see which users have that defined. And this configures the UDID and endpoint for the simulator or for the uh, device, depending on which one you're working with. Um, and each test user has to be authorized by SSH for the user that invoked Parallel Calabash in the first place. Um, you also have to do the settings sharing remote login. Otherwise, Apple there's some extra security that Apple did, which um, means that you have to do that uh, to get SSH working. Um, you can set the primary user as a test user if you want to. Um, and that's actually a fallback mechanism. So if, if you don't set any, any Parallel Calabash stuff up at all, you can still invoke Parallel Calabash, and it'll kick up a, a simulator and just work as a normal um, Cucumber invocation. Um, the Parallel Calabash file looks like this. You can specify an initialization um, line if you need to, um, to do some sort of environmental control. This is just setting up Ruby. If you're working with a device, you can set the UUID with these lines and the endpoint with that. This endpoint is, is the IP address here is specific to the phone. So um, there's no way of finding out from the phone what its IP address is because Apple. Um, if you're working on a simulator, you just need to tell it which port you're using because the server IP address is always the, the local host. Um, you do one or the other. You don't do both device and simulator. Otherwise, things go horribly wrong. Um, your Q Cucumber YML file specifies this parallel Cucumber reports. 
basically so that you can differentiate um, the output files. So this is the, the UUID and the process number from zero up to whatever. Um, ooh. There we go. You invoke it with this. Um, crucially, instead of saying APK here, which is the Android version, you say app here and you give it the app um, uh, directory. This basically means that it chops it up into uh, like a third for each, well, a third or a quarter or a fifth for each device. Um, there are different options here. You can group by di in different ways, but we, we, this is the one we're using at the moment. Um, these grayed out things are just for defaulting. If you haven't set things up properly, it will default to this simulator. Um, and you then you can provide the options that you would normally provide to, to Cucumber. Um, Parallel Calabash works by, by running the dry run command to get a list of all the tests that, that are, that are uh, available, which it feeds this Cucumber Ops uh, thing into to, to get that list out. Um, and then it divides that report up. So it runs Cucumber once to get the dry run, to get the list of tests, and then again for each of the devices. So this, this is used for all of the test runs, and this is used for those runs which are actually associated with a particular device. Um, that's it, really. The, the, this is sort of the wish list. Um, at the moment, we find, this, although it works, it would be nice if it were more stable. Um, we have some problems with um, sort of network and a few other bits and pieces that are, that are making it rickety. Um, although uh, the, the, the reports aren't merged in the parallel Calabash, we actually have some, some report merging uh, mechanisms that we're using internally, which we're not, we haven't released yet, because um, they're custom uh, HTML reports. But, um, but that's something that would be nice to put into Parallel Calabash. That's not there for the Android version either at the moment. Um, it would be nice to have this dynamic test sharing so that instead of having a third and a third and a third, it would be the fastest device gets to run more tests than the slower device, because that makes more sense. And it would be really nice if Apple supported parallel devices because, as I say, coming from an Android background, I find it bonkers <laughs> the amount of chicanery that you have to do to, to, to get anything working. Um, that's the end of the talk. I've um, got a website there. Um, I've written a couple of articles on the blog if you want to go and look at those. Is it, notification, is it notifications on Android and, and coverage as well, wasn't it? There's some coverage thing as well. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if you're interested in, in Android notification pull-down testing or coverage, then you can go and read that. There's some other stuff on, the, on there as well, which is extremely interesting.